on uh, Facebook and people on Facebook, people here, and who is coming, is coming later, uh, please start. Okay, I'll start. So, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, uh, thank you very much for, for joining us. Uh, first of all, thank you very much to Paul for arranging all the shirim and, and to my good friend, Frank, Frank Levy. Pleasure. Also arranging. Thank you very much. So today we're Pleasure going to talk to about uh, the Shir Shiryong. Thank you very, very much. We're going to talk about the Shir Shiryong. Um, and it's something we all will know. We say every day in, in uh, Atafila, at the end of Daphne every day. Um, but although the base of Mikdash was destroyed uh, many, many years ago, we are, just, we are reminded of it all the time. And as we've seen in previous Shirim, Chazal have adapted the Avoda of the Beis HaMikdosh into our everyday Avoda Tashem, our everyday Davni. And here's some examples. The Tefillah, the Amida for Shachris, Mincha, and Musaf, they reflect the offerings in the Beis HaMikdosh, the Korban Tomid, in the morning and the evening, and the Musaf. Another reminder is we have the Beit HaKnesset ourselves, the Shul, we govern it, the construction reflects us of the base of Mikdash. The Bima is in the center, reflecting the Mizbeach. The Aron Kodesh reflects the Ark of the Covenant, the, uh, the, the Teva in the Kodesh Kadashim. And um, the Menorah is positioned on the south side of the uh, Aron Kodesh is the same way as it was based, uh, placed on the south side of the, um, of the, of the Kodesh Kadashim. Uh, so we see that another example which we've discussed in the past is Leil HaSeder, where also the celebration on, we have on Leil HaSeder of the Korban Pesach is, uh, is a reflection of the Korban Pesach we had in the Beis HaMikdosh. And we have Leil HaSeder today, as we, as we discussed in our home, but it's built, built on the same idea as the Korban Pesach we had in Yerushalayim many years ago. Now, another example of this is the Shir Shel Yom, which we say every day at the end of Shachris. This also reflect, reflects the Shir, which was said in the base of Mikdash, as we say every day, Hayom Yom, Aleph, Beit Gimel, whatever it is, Shabo Halavim Hayu Omrim, Beit HaMikdash. So in the Shir today, we look at the role of the Shir in the base of Mikdash and to see how the Shir Shel Yom fits into this model. And some of the things we'll be looking at are as follows. In the base of Mikdash, why were there songs in the base of Mikdash? When were they sung? And what was sung? And regarding tefillah, we're going to ask some questions as well we want to deal with. Which psalm is said on which day, on which occasion? Not just every day of the week, we say, we say on Shabbat, we say on, the, on Rosh Chodesh. Um, where in the order of the tefillah, should the shir, shir shel yom be said? And we're going to see different minhagim. And what are these different minhagim? And what are the reasons for the different minhagim? And then what, what should be done when two or more shirim are, can be said on the same day? For example, if you have Shabbat and Rosh Chodesh, which one should you say? Or both. And for our discussion, we'll be drawing all, sort, all sorts of sources from the Mishnah in Tamid, um, from the Gemaras, in, in, mainly in the Masechet er Erechin, and also Masechet Rosh Hashanah, which discuss, discusses what the, uh, the Levim sang their songs, and also which songs were recited and why. Talking on the Rishalmi, Masechet Sofrim, Rishonim, and Achronim. So let's go onto the Shir Shalyom. Now, the Shir Shalyom, we know, and we all know, from the end of Musaf davening, every Shabbat, end of Musaf, we say as part of the Pita Makitoret, we say, Hashir Shahayu Halavim Omrim Bamikdash. Ayom Rishon, it would say, Lashem Aritz Malav, Yom Sheni, Kaval Hashem Muhulal Maov, Shlishi, Al Kim Nisabata El, Ravi would say, Kelna Kamal Hashem, Hamishi, Harinir Alekim Wazenu, 
השישי, השם מלאך, and Shabbat, they would say, Mizmo Shil Yom HaShabbat. So this is something we say every week, and something we're all familiar with, and we really want to go into more detail. So from this, from this Mishnah, this is in fact the Mishnah which we say on Shabbat at the end of the Sukkot, um, we, we, we know that the, um, um, we know that the psalm was said each day of the week. Now, we know also, of course, the Levim, they're the ones who used to sing the praise to Hashem during the service of the Beis HaMikdash. And this is described in the, in Divrei Hayomim, where it says as follows, Vaya'amed es ha'vim Beis Hashem, b'mitziltayim b'nevalim u'v'chinorot, b'mitzvat David, v'gad chozeh ha'melech v'natan ha'mavi, ki b'yad b'yad Hashem ha'mitzvah, b'yad neviyav. This, this means that the Levim were stationed in the house of God, holding mitzvotalayim or symbols, nevalim or harps, and the Kinoa is translated as lyre, just as De King David and God, the king Seir and Natan HaNavi had commanded them. For the command was from Hashem, was given through from Hashem through his prophets. This is a pasuk in the Rayamim, which really describes the Levim, and they had instruments, and they were in the in the Beis Hamikdash. Now Rashi explains here. He says at the end of this pasuk, which he says Ki biyad Hashem hamitzvah biyad neviav. Rashi explains it means that the command came to through the Levim that leshorer halavim beklei shir that the Levim should not sing, but and accompanying, accompanied by instruments, musical instruments. And Rashi adds something interesting. That the Torah doesn't write explicitly that they should be singing and with their instruments, but rather this was handed down, transmitted through the Nevi'im, but not based on the Pasuk on the Torah, not explicitly anyway. Now, let's have a look at the origin of Shir Shelyon, which obviously was the Avodas Halavim. What is the source for singing in the Beis HaMikdash? So if we look at Masechet Eruchim, we find an extensive discussion on the music of the Beis HaMikdash. And here are some extracts from the discussion. Number one, what's the source of Shir from the Torah. Now, although the Rashi we just quoted above said there's no explicit source for the Shir in the Torah, nevertheless, the Gemara finds that music is strongly hinted at. And the Gemara says the Minayin Le'ikar Shira Min HaTorah, for where is it derived that the basic requirement to accompany offerings should be with a song? Where is it written? Where is it hinted at in the Torah? And then the Gemara, the long Gemara, quotes 10 psukim from Tanakh, each of which indicates there was music and singing. I'm just going to quote three of them to, to you, but for, for, welcome to look over there and you'll find a total of 10 psukim. The first posuk is a posuk from Bar Midbar, which is talking about the Levim, the beginning of Bar Midbar. It talks about the work of the Levim. They help, had to help to carry the Mishkan in the Midbar, and they were had help to help to erect the Mishkan. And the Posuk says they had to do la avod, avodat, avodah. They had to work the service of the service. So the Gemara asks the Ezehu avodah, Shitsricha avodah, which service itself needs another service? Eze avodah, Shitsricha avodah. The Gemara answers, have omer zu shira. What does this mean? This means as follows, that Rashi explains what it means. He says, Ezehu avodah shitzricha avodah, acheret ima, which service needs another service to accompany it. Ave omer ze hashir bikleishir. So singing required another service of playing to accompany the singing. So there we see from this puzzle, we learn out that it has to be singing and with musical instruments. Another 
Pasuk brought in the Gemara is the one, this is from Tehillim. Lanatseach halikitis lasof, haraninu lalokim uzeinu hariru alokei Yaakov, senu se'u zimra, u senu sof, inor noim im nove. He says, take up the melody, that means u zimra, this means, and which would means lift up your voices in song, su'u zimra, right? Then it says, u'snu tov, and sound the timbrel, the tov is a drum or a set timbrel, and the kinor, and also play on this harp, the sweet harp, kinor, kinor na'im, im novel, including the lion. So there we see another possible, which indicates that the singing with instruments was used in, in, in the Tanakh, in the Beis HaMikdash. And another, and the third posuk that I'm bringing here is the posuk from Yeshayahu, who says, showing that the word Yisau means, which means, normally it means to lift, but it means to raise your voice, raise your voice in singing. It says, Hema Yisau Kolam Yaronu, Nega'on Hashem Sahalu Miyam. Those yonder lift up your voice, their voice, they sing for joy, let the majesty of the Lord, they shout from the sea. So this is again, they lift up their voice, Yisau Kolam. So we can see the word Yisau to mean raising the voice in, in song. So these are three of the verses, but there are, as I say, a total of ten verses in the Gemara in Erechim, which we've quoted above. Now, the next point that the Gemara in Erechim discusses is at what stage of the Avodat HaTamid is the Shia said? So, and the Gemara says it was said during the Nisuch Hayayim, the wine libation, as they say in English, wine libation, the Nisuch Hayayim. So why particularly at that point in time? For the following reason, the Gemara says, says why is song only said to accompany to accompany why? Because the Pasuk says in Shoftim, the Gefen, which is arguing between the, the other trees and is offered to the leadership to, to lead the other trees, uh, the Moshal there, and the Gefen says, I don't want to be the king of the trees. Should I leave my wine? The wine which makes happy both God and man? So the Gemara says, what does it mean that um, the wine makes God happy as well as man? We understand how wine makes man happy, but how does wine make God happy? So we say, Gemara says, no. It means that we, how do we make Hashem happy? By praising Hashem. So that means the praise of Hashem should be accompanying the wine stage of the carbon. So the praise of Hashem, so we see shir, this is the hint that shir should be said at the time of Nisuch Hamayin, which accompanied each one of the Harbanot, Tamid, and Musaf. It was always Nisuf Hayayin. And it was at that stage, which is towards the end of the Korban, that when the, the song was sung. Now, another point is that do we have Shir at Mincha? So we see from the a discussion in the Gemara in Rosh Hashanah that Shir was said not only at the Tamid Shel Shacha in the morning Tamid, but also the Korban Mincha. Tamid shel mincha. And we see this from the discussion. The Rabbi Zera says, Sha'amru Shira shall chol im tamid shall bain harbain. They also said the shir shall chol, what we say in the morning, you know, Ayom Yo Shein Bishabat, and said this song, was also said not only in the Tamid Shel Shacha, but also in the Shah Tamid Shel Arbaim, Tamid Shel Hamincha. So we see this from this, this discussion here. Okay. Now, um, 
let's look at the whole ceremony in the base of Mikdash and to see where this fitted in. So the Rambam, based on the Sechel Tongi, goes into detail as to what the Seder of the Aboda was in the Beis HaMikdash. And he writes here, and this is an abbreviated form, Ma'aleta ibarim min ha-kebesh la-mizbeach, they would take the pieces of meat of the Korban from the rampart, which led up to the, uh, the ramp which led up to the Mizbeach, and put it onto the Mizbeach. And then they would mevarachim birchat ha-kohanim, the Kohanim would bless the people, and then they would bring up the um, flour for using the mincha offering. And and then they would bring up onto the altar the wine for the nisuch hamayim. And at the time of the nisuch, as the nisuch was taking place, the levim would say the shir, would they say the song. And the players would play their instruments, which were in the, in the, in the base of Mikdash, the tokim, teisha tikios, and they would blow nine blows on the, on the trumpet, our pilke shir, on each section of the song. And then Rambam goes into a little bit more detail, and he says, when they were giving the wine to the, the Kohen who was going to pour out the wine, then Then two Kohanim would stand on the Shulchan or next to the Shulchan HaChalabim with two trumpets in their hands, Basgano made Al Keren Hamizbeach, and the Skan of the Kohanim, the senior Kohen, would stand on the corner of the Mizbeach on top. Basudrim and he will hold a cloth, cloth in his hand. The taku v'heriyav taku, they would blow, u'bal v'amdu, and then these two kohanim, having blown, they would come and stand next to the one who was um, with the with the tzal with the, the symbol, and would stand echad yimino v'echad l'smono, one on either side. And then the Rambam says. As the Kohen who was bending down to perform the Nisul Chayayin, then the Kohen with the, uh, with the cloth would wave, Manif HaSeganet HaSudai, would wave the cloth, and they would bang on the Tzatzal, on the cymbals would be sounded, V'taku Elu V'chatshotzrot, and the Kohanim would blow trumpets, the Dibru Halavim Bashir, and the Levim would say the Shir. And then the Gemara Ramam finishes off, and every section of the Shir they would blow, and the people would bow down in the Azara. And there were a total of nine blowings for the tongue. And then finally, Rambam says, The only place, the only occasion where they said sing, where they said song, where the songs were sing, sung, songs were sung, was during the Ola of the Tzibu. The Ola of the Tzibu was the Korban Tommy, the Korban Musa. And I'm taking this picture from Machon HaMikdash, which gives you an illustration of, of what was going on. Here you see the, the, uh, the altar, the Mizbeach. Here you see the Levim with their instruments. And here you see the symbol, the Kohen with the symbol. And here the Kohanim, two Kohanim standing either side with trumpets. Um, here you see the people, Hashtachavaya, who were prostrating themselves on the ground. Um, on, on top of the Mizbeach, next to the corner, was the Kohen who was waving this piece of cloth as a signal that everything was ready. And here you see the Kohen who's, who's, who's going towards the, um, the, uh, to, with, with, with the wine, to do the wine. Um, 
Uh, this this picture doesn't show the Levium who are singing. I'm not quite sure why not, but uh, there were Levium there singing. Maybe they were in a different place. And this is the Duchan. You see, we're standing on the platform. That's called the, the Duchan. So that's where we get the expression Duchaning today for Kohanim. Anyway. So now we want to get to um, see what psalms were being were said. So have we seen, as we've seen in um, the earlier, that the uh, Mishnah and Tamid specifies which songs were said. This is what we say as a, um, every Muslim at the end of Muslim on Shabbat. Each day had its song. And why were these songs chosen? Well, Rashi explains for us. He says as follows. On our Sunday, on the first day, we would sing La Shem HaOritz and Loba. Why? Because this was the beginning, the Chilat Ma'aseh This is the beginning of the creation of the world, and the Shem is the master. He is the one who created the world. La Shem HaOritz and Loba. On the second day, what happened the second day of creation? All these days are associated with what happened on the day of creation, that day of creation. Well, the second day, Hashem divided between the lower waters and the upper waters. So we say, God all Hashem, Hashem is great in being able to, in doing this division of the waters, the upper water and the lower water. Now on the third day, what was created? Well, the dry, dry land was created. The land rose up out of the sea. And the land is where mankind, and all, 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 all life will be living on the land. And in order to have civilization, there has to be justice. There has to be the rule of law. So this we says the din v'hadayni. There has to be a rule of law. And this is why we say Elohim nitzav ba'adat el, bekerev Elohim yishpot. Hashem will do justice with the Elohim. Here means the, with the judges. He will support the judges in doing justice. So that's why that's done on the third day. The fourth day. Is the creation of the sun and the moon, and therefore we say the Tehillim of Kel Nakomat Hashem. Hashem will take revenge against those who err and worship the sun and the moon. And on the fifth day, where Bali Chaim animals were created, right? Um, and the wondrous things they the way, different types of animals and the way they move around. Anybody who looks at this will be enamored by, by this wonder, wondrous creation. And they will sing praise to Hashem. And on the sixth day, when Hashem created, completed the work of creation, and everything was ready, including man, who is who's the most able to appreciate, who appreciates the greatness of the Creator, so Hashem, his empire was completed. And therefore we said, Hashem Malach Geut Lavesh. Hashem is the king, his empire is ready, and he was his majesty. Geut Lavesh. So this is the reason why we say those particular to Hillim on those particular days. Now, okay, so we've, we've mentioned here that the Tehillim are mentioned, the Tehillim, the Shia, which was sung each day of the week. That's from Sunday through to Shabbat. However, the Gemara says there are other Shirim which are said on other occasions, which are mentioned in the Gemara. And the Rambam lists them and extracts them from various Gemaras. There was, there was something which was sung on Musaf for Shabbat. And this was a Shir of Hazinu from Sefer Devarim. That song was sung, not, not to Tehillim, but from Devarim. On Minchan Shabbat, they would sing Ozer Shir Moshe, Mi Mikamocha, which is obviously from Shemot, from Parshat B'Shalach. Musaf Rosh Hashanah, where they would sing Haraninu Lalukim Zainu, and the Minchan Rosh Hashanah would sing Kol Hashem Yochil Mubar. So these are, these are a list of, of occasions in which, in addition to the weekday occasions, in which, um, to hear, uh, in which Shir was said. However, it should be there noted that the shirim for the other Chagim and for Rosh Chodesh are not specified anywhere in the Gemara in the Talmud. It's assumed that there were shirim for those days, but we do not know what they were by, from the Talmud itself. 
And there are a couple of special cases where we should, we, we should look at of when shear was said and the problems associated with it. Now, as we know, Rosh Hashanah is one day min It says, Kodesh Hashvi is the Yom Trua. It's only one day. Nowadays, we have two days. I want to go into why we have two days and just the beginning of how, what happened. Why, when did it convert from one day to two? Even in Eretz Yisrael, not in, just in Chuzlar, even in Eretz Yisrael today, we have two days Rosh Hashanah. So Min HaTorah, there's only one day, which is the first of Tishrei. Because the Mishnah in Rosh Hashanah mentions a problem which is unique to Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah being also Rosh Chodesh. If the witnesses for the sighting of the new moon came late in the afternoon, they would declare Rosh Hashanah when well, they would have to, they would only be able to declare Rosh Hashanah when the day was almost over. And this makes a problem of which Shia to say in the afternoon. And this is what the Mishnah says in Rosh Hashanah. Initially, in early times, they would accept the Eidut HaChodesh throughout the whole day, the whole of the 30th of Elul. This is the question. We know this is, today is the 30th of Elul, and the question is, is this 30th of Elul going to be the first of Tishrei, that is, if A didn't come, if we've seen the moon the previous evening, and if they don't, then this day will be the 30th of Elul, and the following day would be the first of Tishrei. So this is what they used to do. The Aden would come, they would be accepted the whole day, and they would declare that day. However, Pamachat, once the Adim delayed coming and the shear of the Levim was, was messed up. This Kalkalu, Halavim, the shear. So, what exactly was the problem? Tiferis, expl Tiferis Israel explained to us what the problem was. He said the problem was that at Mincha, at the Korban Mincha, they didn't say shear at all because. The Adim had not yet come, and they didn't know whether Adim were going to come afterwards or not. So they didn't want to say the Shir Shel Chol, and on, on the other hand, they couldn't say the Shir Shel Rosh Hashanah either, because the Adim hasn't come. So they didn't say Shir. Now, normally Shachrit, the Adim never come. Well, Shachrit is uh, the, the, uh, the Korban Tomid of Shachrit is early in the morning, and indeed. Uh, the Adim will never have come first thing in the morning, so they always said on the 30th of Elul, they always said the Shir Shel Chol. However, when Mincha came, usually the Adim had come by then and they would be able to say the Shir Shel Yom. However, on this particular occasion, when the de Adim delayed coming, therefore they didn't know what to sing and they had to do the Nisach Hamayim without having a song at all. Anyway, that's what happened, and that's the explanation. So we can see from this that the saying of the shear is considered a serious problem, and that's why it says, Bashir. And as a result of this kilkul, of this mess up of the shear, the Mishnah says, it kinu the chachachamim, established a new rule that they would not accept witnesses except if they came, unless they came before Mincha. If they didn't come after Mincha, if they came after Mincha, they wouldn't accept them at all until the following day. They would say, stay overnight, and then we'll listen to your testimony the following day. And that, in that way, they'd say that today, the 30th of Elul, should be a Kodesh should be a day uh, Yom Tov, we're not doing any Malacha, and also the following day, which when the, was the day they would listen to the Adim, they would declare that day also to be the first of Tishri. That they would have two days of Kodesh, two days on which they would do Mamuna Malacha, both on the 30th of Elul and the following day, which would be the first of Tishri. So this is, this is what the Mishnah says. So as far as we're concerned, we can see that the problem of the shear 
was considered that so serious that if the witnesses came late, they would not be accepted till the following day, and the second day would be Rosh Hashanah instead of the 30th of Elul. So the reason that nowadays that we have two days Rosh Hashanah is because of the problem of Shir Shelion. So it's interesting, there were further developments about this, but the basic problem, why we have, which caused us to have two days Rosh Hashanah, right up till today, even in Eretz Yisrael, was because of Kilkul Shel Shir, that's the problem with the Shir Shelion. By the way, um, this is just a, a side note here, but you can say that really, there's a Gemara which says that it made it, that this business of having a Shir Shelion, is it so serious? There's a Gemara which says, the, the, the song, the Chachamim say, is not indispensable. It's quite acceptable to have, it's not acceptable, but the Avad, you can have this nisuch you can have the nisuch of the of the yayin even without having a song. So if it's in, if it is this dispensable, and you have a special like like case like this, is it so serious that we have to warrant this drastic step of refusing to accept the witnesses till the following day? So the Tiferet Israel points out, in fact, there was another associated problem with all this. Why? Because he says, nearly the If they'd said Shir Shel Chol at Milchatan, Ha'am, everybody who's listening to the song would say, Oh, it's a day, is an ordinary day, because we at Mincha time they they've said the Shir Shel Chol, which means the Adim have not come, and therefore today is not a Yom Tov, and they would be Mutabalacha. But in fact, the kilkul would be that the Edim actually came after the Mincha offering, but the people thought today was a day of Chol, and so they would unwittingly be doing Malacha on the Yom Tov, where, which were, was really that of Rosh Hashanah. That's before, so that's why they had to institute the change. So the reason for delaying witnesses to avoid this confusion as to whether the 30th of Elo was Rosh Hashanah or not, and to prevent Chilul Yom Tov. So the publication of the date of Rosh Hashanah and the calendar for the tree was dependent on the Shir Shalyom. So we see the Shir Shalyom had ramifications even in the time of the base of Iktash. And the other case, the other case which is mentioned in the Gemara, where what happens when you have Rosh Chodesh falling, falling on Shabbat, and there were two Korban Man Musaf, there was a carbon musaf for Shabbat, and there was a carbon musaf for Rosh Chodesh. Which shir should you say? And there, it's, it's, it's the Rambam quoting Gemara, says, Rosh Chodesh shechal yod b'Shabbat. Then, shira shel Rosh Chodesh doche et shira shel Shabbat. The shir of Rosh Chodesh will take precedence and push aside the shir of Shabbat, k'day lefarsein shahayom Rosh Chodesh, in order to publicize that today is Rosh, Rosh Chodesh. So that's the case. Okay, so we've seen what ha- went on in the base of Mikdash, and the discussion up till now is a discussion of the Gemaras about what happened then. Now, what happened after the destruction of the base of Mikdash? As the Talmud Yerushalmi says, or discusses whether Shir can be said even without the Nasachim. And Rabbi Yochman is of the opinion that the Levim continued to say Shir even after the Talmud stopped after the destruction of the Basin. That's a Gemara in, in the Gemara Yushalmi in Tav. From this discussion, we can see that the idea that the Shir Shelyon has a place in the service of Hashem in its own right and is not contingent on the Korbanot. That's why Rabbi Yochman's opinion, that you can sing the Shirim even without the Korbanot. So after the destruction of the Vesa Mikdash, when sacrifices were complete, were replaced by tefillah, and we know that tefillah can negate to midim tiknum, and the shir shalyom is to said today as an integral part of our daily service. Every, every morning we say it. So looking at the Siddur today, we see that shir shalyom is said at the end of every shachris. 
However, there are different minhagim as to when and what is said. How did these different minhagim develop? So if we look at the developments of the Shir Shalyom after the destruction of the Vaisamikdash, a number of lists of daily shirim were compiled over the years, and some of the major ones I'm listing here. First of all, there's the Gemara itself, which we've seen some of this before. The Mishnah itself, which we've seen above, which says which weekday shear is said. And there are Gemaras which tell us, which give us information about which shear on special occasions we've seen the shear Shabbat Musaf and Shabbat Mecha, and also Rosh Hashanah Musaf and Rosh Hashanah Mecha. There's, those are explicit Gemaras in Rosh Hashanah. And also, our, the Gemara explains why each shear has been said for that particular day. We've seen that as well. And we also have rules from which we, Gemara states, when there are multiple occasions of Shabbat and Rosh Chodesh occurring on the same day. And we've seen the case of the late arrival of, Rosh, of witness for Rosh Hashanah and its impact. However, the Shia for many Chagim, many occasions, is not mentioned in the Talmud at all. We don't know what the Shia is for Musaf Rosh Chodesh. We don't know what the Shia they sang for Musaf on, on the Chagim, for Pesach, for Shavuot, <coughs> Sukkot, Shemin Yatzeret, or Yom Yom Kippur. So we don't know from the Gemara anyway <coughs> what these Shirim were. However, Masechet Sofri uh, provides a more comprehensive list. And this list in Masechet Sofri, uh, Masechet Sofri was something which was written, was compiled after the, after the Gemara, was compiled in the time of the Gaoni. And that includes, indeed, all the, the Psalms they would say for Pesach, for Shavuot, for Yom Kippur, for Sukkot, and for Shemini Yatzeret. It also has special songs which are said on psalms which are said on Hanukkah and Purim and Tisha B'Av. It also contains rules. It says that am lomarim is morim ba'onatam. You'd say the right song for the right occasion, which means if a special occasion comes up, that special occasion would overwrite the override the Shir Shalyam, which would have been said on that morning. Day. And it says that we have to say the shear, the shear can be said without Nusachim, the libation offering, and wherever there's a choice of saying a Mizmor or a Musaf, you do the Mizmor first. Mm. The Sofrim, Rosh Chodesh, the song for Rosh Chodesh is not mentioned. And we should know that afterwards, in the Sechet Sofrim, there is a debate. Does Masechet for Sofrim, is it referring to what was sung in the Beit HaMikdash? Rather, whether it was what the songs were sung after the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash in the Tefillah at that time. Anyway, another place we have mentioned, early place where we have um, the Shir Shelion is mentioned, is the early Siddur of Rab Amram Gom. And he mentions that, and he mentions it in his Seder Tefillah, in his Siddur. And he says in the Pitu Maktoret, which he said at the end of the davening, he would mention the mission in Tomit. And the, as, an, as an extra thing, after the davening, they would say Ma'amodot, with these correspond to the prayers with which the Negus Israel would say while the sacrifices were being offered. And the Shir Shel Yom is recited in full each day, Monday, Monday Shir, Tuesday, Tuesday Shir. The Tiferet Yisrael, lived, uh, I think, about 100, 150 years ago. Um, it's famous parish on the Mishnayit. He provides an exhaustive list of what was said in the base of Iktosh. Say the Hashir Shishar Halavim ala Duchan Bashar Shinisku Niske Karbalot Sibu. This is what he writes. And this includes what, what she was said for each Tamid Shal Shachal, for the Musaf and the Tamid Shal Bain Harbain, for Bincha, for every occasion. And also what she was said on occasions where there are two lots of Musaf, Shabbat and Rosh Chodesh, Shabbat and Chag. And the Rosh Chodesh, he says, the shear is not known. It's not mentioned. We know he said, Morchi This is what he says. So he was distracted, the, the talking about what was said in the base, of, what his view was, and what was said in the base of Mikdash. 
let's have a look at today's minhagim. Today's minhagim, we are, we have, we have, uh, the Shir is said at the end of Shachrit, that's what we all do, that, either before or after Olein. It's not said at Mincha at all. Now for Shabbat, but the Shir Shel Yom, we have two minhagim. One is to say it after Aleinu, and another one, another min, minhag, is to say it after Shachrit, before Kriyat HaTorah. And for Rosh Chodesh, the Shir is Baruch Nafshi, and there are two main minhagim, either after Mosef, after Aleinu, the Shabbayach, or after Shachrit, before Kriyat HaTorah, when both Baruch Nafshi and the Shir Shel Yom are said. And when Rosh Chodesh falls on Shabbat, some say both Baruch Nafshi and Mizno Shir Shabbat, others say just Baruch Nafshi. There's also the Minhag Hagra, which has a psalm for every day of every Hag. And this Minhag is used today quite widely in Eretz Israel by some Ashkenazi. And the Minhag Hagra says that only one psalm should be said for today. You don't take two psalms. And the one for the Chag takes precedence over the regular Shir Sharyom. That he says the psalm for Rosh Chodesh takes precedence over all, 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 over all other psalms. And the psalm for Shabbat has precedence over the psalm for Hanukkah and Chagim. Now I want to cover another couple of other men hugging. Adam bin Hagim, which either are said or were said in the past. One in Hag is not to say Shir whatsoever. We don't say Shir Shalyam, there are certain in Hag, not to say Shir Shalyam at all as part of the davening. And the Rambam hints at this, and the Rambam says, Nahagu miktsata am likrova, nacholiyom shil mizmo, shahiyalabim. Some of the people would say, have this custom to say the Shir Shalyam implying, of course, that others do not. And there's a Siddur of the Catalonia. Catalonia knows the area in northern Spain around Barcelona was a very famous Jewish community. Ramban, and, uh, the Rashbal came from there, very famous from 800 years ago. And somebody has recently, recently reproduced the Siddur, the Catalan Siddur from that time, the 14th century. And that Siddur, I have a copy of home, uh, does not mention at all the Shir Shalyom. It is the front page, Catalonia, if you look here carefully, it's published in Top Shin Ayin Tet two years ago. And if you look carefully down the list here, if you can see it, it says Shachrit Lachol, Tukar de Zimra, Yotzer, Avod Amida, Tachinaz, that's Tachanon, Sefer Torah, Kriyat Torah, Ashrei, Kedusha de Sidra, that's the Golden Zion, Shirm is Moda Ansaf, Utsu Eitzor, Enkel Okeinu, Parshat HaKetoret, and Aleinu Shabbat. And that was the Daven. And you see that Shir Shalom is not mentioned at all. They did not have that Minhag. And there's another Minhag altogether. And that is what uh, I've taken from this Machso, which I have a copy of at home. It's uh, the 1958 edition of the um, Rutledge Machso. It's an English Machso. This is the... Uh, in the 18th edition, and what they have, and I've just taken a page from the Yom Kippur davening, but it could be any davening, but the other Yom Tobin as well, it's all the same. It says right at the beginning of Shachri, when putting on the talis, this is the bracha you say, we're putting on the family, and immediately after that, we say the shil shel yom. So we can see from that, that there was this minhag, which was certainly in England in the early times, apparently, was they said the Shir Shel Yom straight after the Korban Tomid, which is said the first part of Shachrit before we say Baruch Sha'ama. So that's another. Um, and there is another arrangement uh, also based on Mesechet Sofrim, which Rabbi, Rabbi uh, Menachem Azariah of, of Fano in Italy in the 16th century said, he said basically he took the um, he took the uh, the Sechet Sofrim, the list there, and he adapted it for his community. And he, was, he said he said explicitly, we have permitted ourselves to institute in our big Knesset a fixed schedule schedule for the Shir Shir Yom, but with some changes from the custom of it being. 
and there they had a full, um, a full list of all the Chagim and special songs which are said on each Chag. I want to now, in the, in the closing few minutes we have, to discuss some questions which can arise out of these Minhagim. Question number one, why is Shir Shel Yom on Shabbat said after Musaf and not after Shachris as per the rest of the week? Well, uh, certainly Ashkenazim say the Shir Shel Yom after Musaf and not after Shachris. Although the Shir Shel Yom is really to do with the Korban Talib of Shacha associated with Shachris. Another one, why does the Shir from Rosh Chodesh replace the Shir Shel Yom or is it said in addition? And another question, is the Shia for Rosh Chodesh said after Shachrit or after Musaf? We have that during the week. Some people say it after Musaf, and some people say it after Shachrit. Why is there a Shir Shalyom at Mincha today? And why is the Shir Shalyosef, Musaf, Shalyom uh, never said? So a number of important teshuvas have been written over the years to explain these different Minhagim. And I just want to cover one or two major points. Um, dealing with the first question, why is Yom Tov Shabbat said after Musaf, not after Shachris? So Rabbi Michiel Michal Epstein, the Baal Orach Hashuch, famous Orach Hashuch, he says regarding this Moshele and Shabbat, whether it should be said after Shachris and Musaf, he says he's surprised, he's an Ashkenazi, and he's surprised that the Minhag Ashkenaz to say it after Musaf. He pointed out that originally there were separate shirim for Shachrit and Musaf, and the Shir Shel Yom, which is the Shir Shabbat, was also always said after Shachrit, in line with the Sephardi Minhag and not the Ashkenazi Minhag. In other words, he, although an Ashkenazi Rav, a famous Ashkenazi Rav, he was surprised at the Minhag Ashkenaz. He says here, pele, and it's very surprising. So that's the Orach HaShulchan. Rav Waldenberg, a great rabbi Mishalayim who was lifted about 10 years ago, at Tzitz Eliezer, he discusses the same issue. And he was asked whether Minhag Ashkenaz to say Mizno Shir Liyom Shabbat after Musaf is correct, whether it should be said after Shachrit. So first of all, he quotes the Maram Mipano we've seen above, whose custom is to say the Shir Shel Yom after Shachrit, and the separate Shir Shel Musaf after Musaf. So this was in, in, line, in line with what was done at the base of Mikdash. So since the Sephardic Minhag today is only to say only the Shir Shel Yom and not a Shir Shel Musaf at all, then this practice does not exactly, the Sephardic practice does not really exactly match what was done in the base of Mikdash. And it's only Zecher in the Alma. So therefore he says the attitude should be that the whole Shir Shel Yom is only Zecher in the Alma of what was done in the base of Mikdash. And he also claims that it's better to say the Shir Shem Yom after Musaf, and this is Shir Shabbat, to say it after Musaf, as the Ashkenazim do, rather because it says, he says, Ya'aleh hazikaron lakan or lakan, and it would be as if for both Shachrit and Musaf. So though that's how he justifies the Ashkenazi Minhag of Shem Shem, Shir Shem Yom after Musaf. He then goes on to discuss the Minhag of the Sephardim, and he quotes the, Meg the Mogan of Rome, who says the Shir Shel Yom today is just Zeich Almo, and therefore it's only just a general reminder, a point we've made above. And then he goes on to say that the Shir Shel Yom of Shachrit, for the, for, for, uh, saying it after, as the Sephardim do after Shachrit, is also not a complete reflection of the Shir of the base of Mikdash. The Shir Shel Yom was said after the Korban Tomi, and the corresponding place in the Tefillah is before Shachrit, after saying, the Karbal Tamin, the beginning of Shachri. So he says, in the Sephardim don't do it exactly what was done in the base of Mikdash anyway. So therefore, he concludes that this Shir Shalyom is just Zeicha Ba'alpa, and therefore does not have to be exactly the same as was done the Shir Shalyom in the base of Mikdash. And he also says, the Shir Shalyom has an additional purpose. And what's that? And that is that it's he says, is to emphasize the Kedusha Shalyom, and as such, its proper place is after Musa. This is what he says. Kein kedei lahad gish gam she'amira zot hi mipnei etzem kedushat hayom 
Baromanto. If we say in order to give us this wonderful feeling, today is Shabbat, and it's most appropriate to say that the end of the Davne before we go home. The Achen Gemara Tehillat Mosif. So that's so we have one 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 side one Ashkenazi Rav who doesn't like the Ashkenazi Minhag of saying after Muslim, and another Ashkenazi Rav who justifies. It. And then the other question we asked was the Shir from Rosh Chodesh replace the Shir Sholiom or was it said in addition? And there are really two points of view. The tool says. He says a made lays down a rule. Behold, the man is a man mishanim hamizmor the fi in yano. The mizmor should be varied according to whatever the Indian of the day is. For example, borchi nafshi should be said on Rosh Chodesh, and it's a minhag tov. That's the tool. Now the tool we know is the basis for the Shulchan Aruch. What the tour says has great weight. It means that on Rosh Chodesh only baruch Orchi Nafshi said, and not the Shir Shelion. And this also applies to Hanukkah and Purim to Chavid, as discussed by commentator, commentary, the Shari Knesset Agadola on, on the tour. And this is also supported by the Rambam, who says, given the conflict of Shir Shelion, overrides the Shir Shal Shabbat. Rosh Chodesh Shechaliot Shabbat, Shir Shal Rosh Chodesh Dochet Shir Shabbat, that the Shir Rosh Chodesh pushes aside the Song of Shabbat. So this is the Torah's point of view, that you only say one song on Rosh Chodesh and even on Shabbat, and that will be Orchi However, the, the Knesset HaGadolah disagrees with it, and he says, under whose authority can any change be made to the Shir Shal Levi'in? To the Temani, and I'm surprised, me hitir him. Who allowed the the two, the Shanot Hashir, Shahayu Halabim, of Beta Umbrim, of Beta Becholium, to change what the Levim has said? Surely we know that for sure that's what they said. Surely that has priority. And therefore, and he quotes the Ramor to say, you should say both, both the Shir Shalyom and the Shir of the occasion. And the Shir Rosh Chodesh is said after Shachrit and after Musaf. Okay, just finishing off now. We say that um, the Rav Levi discusses this. Rav Levi was a rabbi in Tel Aviv uh, uh, a few years ago, and he says to justify the Sfaradi um, Minhag that he says that the Rosh Chodesh was original. The origin of Rosh Chodesh, of Shir Shal Chodesh, is after Musaf. However, for those who say Shir Shal Rosh Chodesh replaces the Shir Shal Yom, then this can explain why it is said after Shah. So in conclusion, we can say that the following. In answer to the questions posed about, we can conclude that the widely or even universally accepted practice to say today is to say Shir Shal Yom in the morning and the service at the end of Shachrit and Musaf. Shir Shalyom is said on special occasions, which differs according to the different minhag, and min, each minhag has its supporting reasons. We say Hayom Rom Rishon B'Shabbat to remind us of Shabbat, and the other part Shahayu Halivim Omrim B'Beit Hamikdash to remind us of the Beit Hamikdash. So the this is the what we say every day before we say to Hilim, we say this Hayom Rom Rishon B'Shabbat to remind us of Shabbat. And to remind us the Beit Hamikdash. And some of the ideas we've seen, although the Beit Hamikdash and Kabbalah were halted, right? Um, halted. The Shir was not. The Shir was not halted. And we continue to say the Shem Shirim in the same spirit. The Shirim commemorate the stage of creation we've seen, and the Shir is a zechel alma for the Beit Hamikdash. The Shirim accompanied Nisuchayayin to bring Simcha to Hashem and to mankind. Korbanot were transformed to prayer after the Korban Abayit, and the Shir Shalyom continues to accompany us even till today. And the Psalms, the Tehillim, are inspiring and express feelings of our most fitting way to give praise to Hashem. And every day has its own blessings, and for that, each day has its own Shir. And in conclusion, I will say today is being Thursday, and 
what better way to conclude with the fifth shir, which is mentioned? Sing joyously to Hashem. He is our strength. Raise a shout for the God of Jacob. Take up the song, sound the timbre, and the melodies for the lyre and the harp. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. It was again very interested. Very good. And I uh, yeah. hope to see you uh, next time and okay. wish you a um, good day. Thank you very much. And you Probably as well. Good. All keep well. Keep well. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay.